Remember all those oysters you ate during Fiesta? Well, here they are now. They're getting recycled and they're currently in their decontamination phase. We're gonna show you the entire process, but let's go back to the beginning. St. Mary's University served more than 100,000 oysters this year at Oyster Bake 2025. The shells from the oysters we eat during Fiesta are collected and driven 150 miles down to the coast. This is all part of a restoration project to save the oyster reefs, and it's being led by the Hart Institute out of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Oyster reefs across the world, the Gulf of Mexico and in Texas, have really seen severe declines. So shell recycling essentially puts that fundamental building block, those shells back in the water where nature intended it to allow the process to continue. After being collected, the first stop for these shells is the port of Corpus Christi. This is what the decontamination phase looks like. Literally thousands of oyster shells all stacked up in this big pile and they're gonna sit here for six months. We don't want any bacteria that was on them before um, to go into the water. Once these shells have sat in the sun for half a year, they're ready to hit the road again. We're back in the car now and we're headed to St. Charles Bay. That's where the Heart Institute is actually rebuilding this oyster reef. This part of the Texas coast is really ideal for oysters. Oysters begin their lives as tiny larvae, but they need to attach to a hard surface to develop into the oysters we all know and love. That's why it's so important to put these shells back into the bays. And it's the reason volunteers come out here once a year. And we love to see that whole process. 12 tons of oyster shells bagged and ready to go back in the ocean. We're creating a living shoreline here. It's for storm surge, it's habitat. There's so many benefits for these oysters going in the water. This is a project to preserve Texas's oyster reef. And now San Antonio can be a part of the solution. Thousands of oysters. When you see all those shells, what are you thinking of? I hope we get them all. There's a lot of opportunity in an oyster. Oh, absolutely. The Fiesta Confetti has settled here in San Antonio, and St. Mary's University is calm again. But it wasn't long ago that campus here was packed, and it was oysters that were the center of attention. Did you know each year at the annual Oyster Bake, St. Mary's University serves more than 100,000 oysters? But after you eat them, where do the shells end up? It's actually not the trash, but the answer requires a ride. The shells from the oysters we eat during Fiesta are collected and driven 150 miles down to the coast. This is all part of a restoration project to save the oyster reefs, and it's being led by the Heart Institute out of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Thanks for having us. This is great. Wonderful. So, so you guys came all the way down? Yeah, from San Antonio. How did you guys come up with the idea? Oyster reefs across the world, the Gulf of Mexico and in Texas, have really seen severe declines that we just started learning about probably in the last decade. Shell recycling essentially puts that fundamental building block, those shells, back in the water where nature intended it to allow the process to continue. Why is all this so important? For the ecosystem, for our waters, uh, keeping oyster shell out of the waste, they're not trash. They are a huge resource for our bays. After being collected, the first stop for these shells is the port of Corpus Christi. This is what the decontamination phase looks like. Literally thousands of oyster shells all stacked up in this big pile, and they're gonna sit here for six months. They've got a lot of uh, bacteria and fresh, um, Tabasco sauce and things that people put on them. We don't want any bacteria that was on them before um, to go into the water. You can tell these shells are in their decontamination phase by the smell, but also by the color of the shell too. They're gray right now, but when they're dried out and ready for the bay, they'll be a lot whiter in color. Once these shells have sat in the sun for half a year, they're ready to hit the road again. We're back in the car now and we're headed to St. Charles Bay. That's where the Heart Institute is actually rebuilding this oyster reef. Goose Island is a great spot for uh, fishing, boating, biking, birding. You might think, oh, it's on the water. Like this is a swimming park, right? No, in fact, uh, we have a bunch of oysters around us and they're really sharp. Why this island? Why Goose Island State Park? This part of the Texas coast is really ideal for oysters. So there's the sort of the perfect balance of saltwater and freshwater that mixes in this area that oysters like. Oysters begin their lives as tiny larvae, but they need to attach to a hard surface to develop into the oysters we all know and love. They need a really stable structure, so they might attach onto a pier or your dock. 
but the really ideal places are where there are already oysters because the oyster baby oysters then know that's a place where oysters are going to survive and, and grow. That's why it's so important to put these shells back into the bays. And it's the reason volunteers come out here once a year. Okay, Izzy, let's go. Scooping, bagging, and rebuilding Texas's oyster reef. It's a job for any age. High fives, high fives all around, high fives all around. <laughs> and one even for me. Could you have imagined 20 years ago that this is what the program would look like today? Not in my wildest dream. 1,127. We're creating a living shoreline here. It's for storm surge, it's habitat. There's so many benefits for these oysters going in the water. So it's great for not just regrowth, but also for our ecosystem. Right, right. Our bays, um, our marine life, everything. The 2025 drop is done, but now the Heart Institute is starting to collect shells for next year. We depend on partnerships so much. We take them and we collect them in a bin and we rinse them off and then we throw them in another bin and wait till they dry and someone comes and picks them up. And the Institute relies on businesses like Copanos. We had nothing else, no other thing we could do with them but just throw them away. And so when did they approach you? About a year ago, mm -hmm, a year and a half. Our bays are important to us. And they're not alone. It's really pretty easy for us to deal with the oysters. It's important to help with the recycling program and to purchase the farm-raised oysters. Most of the restaurants collecting shells are along the coastline. That's why the South Texas Coastal Initiative is trying to reach more people in San Antonio. We have 62 restaurants on our target list here in San Antonio. Ernest Brown wants businesses here in our city to collect shells year-round. It's a big project y'all are taking it, on. It's, it is, but it's something that if we get it in place, will be sustainable for hopefully ever. This is a project to preserve Texas's oyster reef, now expanding to San Antonio and someday statewide. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Twelve tons of oysters all ready to go back in the ocean. Oh, tons. I'm shell shocked. That's our Avery Everett on the Texas coast. You remember all those oysters you ate during Fiesta? Well, this is what they look like now. Avery shows us how nonprofits are collecting these shells as part of a Texas based conservation project. We went through thousands of oysters. When you see all those shells, what are you thinking of? I hope we get them all. The Fiesta Confetti has settled here in San Antonio and St. Mary's University is calm again. But it wasn't long ago that campus here was packed and it was oysters that were the center of attention. Did you know each year at the annual Oyster Bake, St. Mary's University serves more than 100,000 oysters? But after you eat them, where do the shells end up? It's actually not the trash, but the answer requires a ride. <laughs> The shells from the oysters we eat during Fiesta are collected and driven 150 miles down to the coast. This is all part of a restoration project to save the oyster reefs, and it's being led by the Hart Institute out of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Oyster reefs across the world, the Gulf of Mexico and in Texas, have really seen severe declines. Shell recycling essentially puts that fundamental building block, those shells, back in the water where nature intended it to allow the process to continue. After being collected, the first stop for these shells is the port of Corpus Christi. This is what the decontamination phase looks like. Literally thousands of oyster shells all stacked up in this big pile, and they're going to sit here for six months. We don't want any bacteria that was on them before um, to go into the water. Once these shells have sat in the sun for half a year, they're ready to hit the road again. We're back in the car now, and we're headed to St. Charles Bay. That's where the Heart Institute is actually rebuilding this oyster reef. This part of the Texas coast is really ideal for oysters. Oysters begin their lives as tiny larvae, but they need to attach to a hard surface to develop into the oysters we all know and love. That's why it's so important to put these shells back into the bays, and it's the reason volunteers come out here once a year. Okay, Izzy, let's go. Scooping, bagging, and rebuilding Texas's oyster reef. We're creating a living shoreline here. To get enough shells, the Heart Institute partners with more than just festivals. They work with restaurants too. Now, the South Texas Coastal Initiative is trying to add San Antonio businesses to this list. 
We have 62 restaurants on our target list here in San Antonio. It's a big project y'all are taking it, on. It's, it is, but it's something that if we get it in place, will be sustainable for hopefully ever. This is a project to preserve Texas's oyster reef. And now San Antonio can be a part of the solution. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News.